Today on America's Test Kitchen, Julia and Bridget unlock the secrets to foolproof tamales with red chicken chili. And Dan makes Julia the ultimate chorizo and potato tacos. It's all coming up right here on America's Test Kitchen. If you're lucky enough to live near a tortilla factory or maybe a Latin market, you might find this. This is coarse ground masa harina and it's great for making tamales. But more likely you're gonna find a finer type at the supermarket and that's used for making tortillas. But Julia's here and we're gonna show you how to make tamales with a great texture and flavor no matter where you live. Mm-hmm, I love tamales. I do too. And now, if you notice, even on this bag, they show there are two kind of casings for a tamale. There's this green husk, or fresh husk, and the dried husk. Now, the green husk comes with an ear of corn inside. <laughs> <laughs> and really, they can be hard to find. So we prefer to use the dried husk. And this is what it looks like if you buy it at the store or online. Get a nice big bag. It can last you a long time. Now, if you use a dried husk, you need to rehydrate it first. So here I have 20 husks. Now we're only making 18 tamales, but always include a few extra just for safety. You just want to pour some boiling water right over the husks. Inevitably, some of them are going to rip, which is why we're making extra. It's true. So we're going to let these sit for about 30 minutes. And of course, I'm going to weigh them down with a nice plate. Woo, that's hot. To help keep them submerged. OK. All right, I'm going to put this out of the way back here. And now we're going to get to the best part, the filling, right? That little nugget of flavor inside yes. the tamale. And today we're making a chicken and chili filling. And we're going to use two kinds of chilies here. Here we have an ancho, which is a dried poblano, and a New Mexican chili, which is a dried version of a slightly spicier chili, kind of related to the Anaheim. And now when you prep these, all I'm going to do is take off the stems and shake out all the seeds. And then we're just going to tear these into half inch pieces. And as we tear, we might find a few seeds stuck in there. We can pull them out as we need to. And the seeds are OK in terms of flavor, but they don't break down, so they make a little texture in the sauce that we don't quite want. We want a nice, smooth sauce. Now you want one cup of both of these chilies. And the thing to do before you start cooking is to toast them. You're going to toast them over medium heat. You're going to add them right to the dry pan. And it can take anywhere from two to six minutes, depending on how many chilies you have in the skillet and how dry they are. Smells so good, but this is a job where you don't want to walk away because these chilies can go from fresh and pliable and fragrant to burnt to a crisp in two seconds. It's and true. It'll scorch flavor will ruin everything. All right. Oh, you can really smell those. Smells so good. Mm -hmm. Time to take them off the heat. I'm just going to put them in this bowl for now. Back on the heat, we're going to add three tablespoons of vegetable oil. We're going to give this a minute so the oil can start to shimmer, which won't take long because the pan's still pretty hot. And now we're going to add an onion. We're going to let this cook until it starts to soften. That takes about five minutes or so. All right, you can see these onions have softened and starting to get a little brown on the edges. So we're going to add six cloves of minced garlic, an important flavor in this filling. We're also going to add a little cumin, three quarters of a teaspoon of cumin, three quarters of a teaspoon of oregano. And that was dried oregano. And half a teaspoon salt. We're also going to add our dried chilies back at this point. Oh. Now, this is kind of the basis for a lot of Mexican sauces, where you saute aromatics and you stir in toasted dried chilies. And depending on the chilies you use or the aromatics you use, you can get different flavors. That garlic, you can start to smell it. It only needs about 30 seconds or so. And now we're going to stir in some broth. This is three cups of chicken broth. So we're just going to bring this up to a simmer, reduce the heat down a little bit, and let it cook gently for about 10 minutes until it's slightly thickened. Oh, <laughs> what a difference 10 minutes makes, huh? So fragrant, and it's actually reduced. Yeah, and so all the chilies are nicely softened, so it's going to puree into a nice, fine sauce. And I often make a mess in my own kitchen trying to shove everything from the skillet into the blender all at once. So over time, I've learned to use a spoon. We're just going to puree this into a smooth, and that, depending on your blender, take anywhere from 20 seconds to a minute. All right, let's take a look here. Oh, looks good and smooth. Back into the skillet, this pureed sauce goes. Oh, oh that looks so good. Isn't that amazing? And now we're going to put this back over medium heat. And now we're going to add the chicken, because it's a chicken filling. How about that? Yeah, we're going to poach the chicken right in the sauce. So here I have one and a quarter pounds of chicken thighs. 
And chicken thighs really just work better than breasts here because the dark meat really responds well to braising. It stays nice and juicy. It's great that you're using boneless, skinless thighs too because you don't have to worry about taking out the bones or all the fat that comes from the skin. That's right. So a little bit of salt and pepper on both sides right into the sauce. And of course, they're gonna release a little liquid into the sauce. It'll loosen the sauce up a bit as they cook. And this is one of those situations where the sauce is gonna flavor the chicken and the chicken's gonna flavor the sauce. So it's a win-win. It is a win-win. All right, so we're gonna bring this back to a simmer. And once it's at a simmer, lower the heat, put the lid on and cook it for about 25 minutes until the chicken registers about 160 degrees. While that's simmering away, let's talk about the masa, which we know is going to be controversial. Because you mentioned at the beginning, real tamales use masa for tamales, which is a little bit thicker mm -hmm. than masa harina, and it can be very hard to find. So we're going to substitute. And it's a little controversial, but it tastes so <laughs> good. We're going to use one cup and two tablespoons of masa harina, one cup and two tablespoons of grits. In here, I have quick grits, not instant. All right, so this is boiling water. I'm just going to measure out one and a half cups. Because they have the different grinds, this is so much bigger than masa harina. You need to give the grits a head start with the hot water so it softens. We're just going to whisk this in, make sure there's no clumps of grits stuck at the bottom. All right, so the grits have been soaking for 10 minutes, and it's time to add the masa harina. That's a cup and two tablespoons. We're just going to stir this right in. Don't need to add any extra moisture. And you can see it's starting to form that nice workable dough. I'm just stirring it to make sure there's no dried pockets of masa harina anywhere. That looks pretty good. At this point, we're gonna cover it. We're just gonna set this aside for about 20 minutes. All right, now time to take a look at our filling. This has been simmering away for a little less than half an hour. Looks so good. Oh, isn't it? And the chicken is nicely cooked through. These little pieces cook through in no time. So now I'm gonna turn off the heat. I'm gonna take the chicken out. I'm gonna let it cool for just a little bit before we shred it up. And this sauce left in the skillet. Now some of it we're gonna use to help flavor the chicken filling. And the rest of it we're gonna serve with the tamales because that's just too much flavor to lose. We are gonna season it though. We're gonna add just a little bit of vinegar. This is a tablespoon and a half of cider vinegar. It just brightens up everything a little bit. Then I just wanna give it a quick taste. Sometimes it needs a little salt, pepper, or even a little sugar to really bring out all the flavors. And that really depends on the bitterness of the chilies that you use. Sometimes they run a little bit on the sweet side, but sometimes they can be a little bit bitter. Yeah, so I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and just a little bit of sugar to help balance the bitterness of these chilies. All right, I'm gonna give that one more little taste, make sure I got it just right. Uh-huh, yeah. It's gonna be half gone by the time you finish seasoning Ooh, it. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna measure out a cup of it, and that's gonna go in with the chicken filling. The rest of this sauce, I'm just gonna set aside. I'll put the lid on, that way it doesn't evaporate. And we're gonna see that again when we serve. Okay. All right, so now time to shred the chicken. Easiest done with two forks. You can see this chicken's just gonna pull apart. You don't get a lot of filling inside of a tamale. It's really just a generous tablespoon or so. And so you want these pieces of chicken to be very small. So I'm really gonna take my time and shred it up into tiny pieces. And this is another reason that you didn't wanna use chicken breasts instead of chicken thighs. You would never be able to shred it like that. This is so tender, just falls apart with the two forks. All right, I took my time here, shredded it really finely. Now we're gonna put it in a bowl, toss it with some of the sauce. Using a bench scraper, it makes it really easy here to get all this lovely mm -hmm. shredded chicken right off the board. In goes the cup of reserved sauce. This is the stuff right here. <laughs> all right, that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna wanna chill this before we make the tamales, so I'm just gonna cover it with a little plastic wrap and put it in the refrigerator until we're ready to make tamales. Sounds good. Our filling is chilled, our corn husks are soaked, this has been nice and rested. This is the masa harina and the grits together. It's time to make tamales. So for the rest of the filling, I'm gonna take this mixture of grits and masa harina, and we're gonna finish it in the food processor. A lot of recipes just used this mixture and didn't add any fresh corn, but the ones that added fresh corn tasted so good. You could really taste the corn flavor because it's corn. There's corn in it. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna add frozen corn that we've thawed, and it's one and a half cups. Most tamales are just made with lard. When you can find good lard, it has real flavor. Mm -hmm. Most of the stuff you find at the supermarket these days doesn't have a lot of flavor. So what we found is you wanna use part lard, part butter. So this is six tablespoons of lard, six tablespoons of butter. And of course, the lard and the butter have been softened. Now we're just gonna add a little bit of sugar, just a tablespoon of sugar. Now this ingredient is quite unusual. This is two and a quarter teaspoons of 
baking powder and it's gonna do exactly what you think. It's gonna, when the heat hits it, bubble up and make a really light tamale so you won't get those lead sinkers. This is crucial. Last but not least, a little salt, three quarters of a teaspoon. And now we're just gonna process this for about a minute till it's nice and smooth, stopping to scrape down every so often as we need. All right, let's take a look. Oh, that looks perfect. Everything's pretty much mm -hmm. processed up. You don't see any big pieces of corn. It is tamale making time. All right, I'm gonna start us off easy with two really nice big corn husks here. All right, and each tamale is gonna get about a quarter cup of the masa mixture. Now, if you make tamales a lot, investing in one of these scoops is gonna save you a lot of headache. We're gonna put the tamale mixture on. So this is about a quarter cup of that masa dough, and now we're gonna spread it out into a nice thin layer. Leave about at least a finger width okay. at the very end because there's that baking powder in there, and as they cook, it's gonna shoot out the top. You wanna go right to the edge. All right. Just about a four inch square. Using these little spatulas is great. Spraying them with a little bit of vegetable oil spray helps prevent that sticky dough from getting all over this. And this is where the patience comes in. Really, these are special occasion sort of thing. No, it's true, these are made often for Christmas. And you bring in the whole family and you do it. And since Julia and I are family, that's why we're doing <laughs> it together. How's this, a little bit bigger? That's perfect. All right, so now we're gonna add our chilled filling. We're gonna use a scant two tablespoons. You wanna put it right down the middle. Mm. All right. And this is where you really want to avoid the temptation to overfill these tamales. <laughs> it's and true. Pack in as much of that as possible. It's true. And I'm an overfiller. I mean, I overfill my tacos and burritos all the time. So this, you gotta show a little restraint. So this masa is pretty sticky. You wanna encase the filling in the masa. So we're gonna touch this edge to this far edge so that it's fully encased. So if a little of the filling leaks out, that's fine. Okay. But if it really goes all over the place, no shame in taking a little more masa filling and patching it up. All right, so now we're just gonna roll it up tightly. Keep rolling, keep rolling. And then you can see where the husk ends on that seam. Mm -hmm. It's gonna fold them. And there we have a tamale. Now some people wrap these to help keep them closed. Mm -hmm. We found that really wasn't necessary. As long as you cook them with the seam side mm -hmm. down, they don't unravel. And place them seam side down right on the platter. You're a natural. All right. Well, I say you are one fine tamale maker. You can come over to my house anytime. And I'm gonna eat half of them. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's time to cook them, and when you cook tamales, you actually steam them in a steamer basket. And half of the trick of steaming them is getting them into the basket without tipping over, because you want them to stand up so the filling stays inside. So the first few are always the trickiest. You want to put that fold where the seam is to the outside of the pan. All right. It's a little bit of a puzzle, but once you get the first few in there, then they hold each other up they and it's sure a do. lot easier. Mm, two more to snuggle in here. There we go. Oh, right. So these tamales have a long cooking time. They're gonna steam for about an hour. And of course, we have water in the bottom of that pot. You wanna check that water every 15 minutes or so to make sure it hasn't boiled away. Okay. All right, these tamales have been cooking for an hour. Time to take a peek. So the cooking time is always a good indication if the tamales are done. But another way to tell is to take a look at the tamale dough itself. It should be able to pull right away from the husk very easily. And Not sticking how, anymore to the husk. That's right, and that's how you know it's done. All right, so those are fully cooked. Put these on a nice big platter. I am very impressed because at home when I make tamales, I always have one sacrificial tamale. <laughs> it just doesn't want to hang together. It blows up in the pot. Mm -hmm. We just scoop it out and eat it anyway. Yeah, it happens to the best of us. But really, tamales is all about taking your time when you fold them so that the tamale filling is really full encased in all that masa. All right, so tamales are served. There's a tamale for you. You can see why they make them for Christmas, because it's a little gift. Aw. <laughs> and a little sauce. Yes, and by a little, please a lot. And you can see that light masa dough, it just breaks apart. It's not like a lead sinker at all. Mm hmm You taste corn, you taste chilies, and then a little bit of chicken. I mean, it's magical. It really is. I think a lot of people buy their tamales from the freezer section, and they get used to that very dense texture that has almost no flavor. And you forget, a real tamale is supposed to taste like corn. It's supposed to taste like corn, and it's supposed to be pretty light, too. Now, the lucky thing about these, if you didn't want to serve them all at once, you could actually let these cool, wrap them, and freeze them for up to three months. Now, our recipe for foolproof tamales starts by soaking corn husks. Make a sauce with toasted dried chilies, spices, and broth. Then cook chicken thighs right in that sauce. Use both grits and masa harina to make a coarse dough, process with fresh corn, and get a friend to help assemble the tamales. Steam until cooked through and serve with more sauce. 
from our test kitchen to your kitchen to Molly's with red chili chicken filling. Good Mexican tacos are no longer only available to those living in the Southwest. These days, folks all over the country enjoy authentic tacos filled with carnitas, carne asada, or al pastor. And today, we're going to introduce you to another traditional taco, tacos de chorizo con papa, or chorizo and potato tacos. Now, Julia, you might be thinking it's a bit of a weird combination. Yeah, I'd never right? heard of it before. Potatoes and chorizo. But the beauty of these tacos is the chorizo releases all that beautiful red, meaty, chili-infused oil, and then the potatoes soak it right up. Ooh, so you get sold. this beautiful cohesive filling. So that's what we're gonna start with is the potatoes. So this is a pound of Yukon Gold potatoes that we peeled and cut into half-inch pieces. Yukons are really important for this recipe because we want them to be nice and creamy and tender, but we don't want them to fall apart into mashed potatoes. I have four cups of water that I brought to a boil here in a 12-inch nonstick skillet. I'm gonna add in my potatoes and a teaspoon of salt. Just gonna stir that in. Now this is somewhat of an unusual vessel for boiling potatoes. It is, so we're actually gonna use the skillet for the entire cooking process. Once this comes up to a simmer, I'm gonna cover, reduce the heat to medium, and we're gonna cook just for three to five minutes. We want them to be just barely tender because we're gonna finish cooking them later. It's been five minutes, so let's check our potatoes. And as I said, we're looking for just tender, and that's beautiful with a paring knife. It goes right through. I'm gonna turn off the heat, and we're gonna drain them. And you have a clean skillet now. Isn't that nice? I'm just gonna wipe it out. We've dealt with the potatoes a little bit. Now we're gonna focus in on the chorizo. Some people can find really good Mexican chorizo in their local area. Lucky dogs. Lucky dogs. A lot of people can't, and it varies a lot brand to brand. So we wanted to make a chorizo that you can just dial in exactly the flavor that we want. So we're gonna start with three tablespoons of vegetable oil. And then we're gonna add a lot of different spices, really make a very complex sausage. So we're starting with a tablespoon of ancho chili powder. I also have a tablespoon of paprika. One and a half teaspoons of dried oregano. One and a half teaspoons of ground coriander. That nice lemony finish. I also got three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. A half a teaspoon of ground black pepper. A quarter of a teaspoon of cinnamon, which adds nice warmth to it. I've got a pinch of allspice and a pinch of cayenne. So a little bit of real heat at the end. So a lot of spices, but they're all pretty pantry friendly for making chorizo. Totally, and we wanted this to be really approachable. You don't have to get whole chilies and grind them and that kind of thing. If we were to take all these spices and mix them right into the pork, we'd end up with something that's pretty pasty. So what we're doing here is blooming them in some oil. It's gonna help with flavor. It's also gonna get rid of that dustiness. So I'm bringing this up over medium heat. I'm gonna stir it to combine, and you can already smell that. You really can. Oh, nice. So we're just looking for it to start to bubble like that. That means that it's nice and hot. We can smell all those good aromatics in there. Well, the smell changed a little bit. At the beginning, it smelled a little raw, and now it's a little deeper of a flavor, a little toasty smelling. Beautiful color, too. I love that. OK, so now I'm going to remove it from the heat. I'm just going to pull it back here, turn off the heat. And then we've got a few more ingredients to add. I have three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, some nice tang, one and a half teaspoons of sugar, and one garlic clove that we minced. We are almost ready for our pork, but we're gonna let this cool for about five minutes before we get it in. Now that this is cooled down, we can add our pork. So I have eight ounces of ground pork here. We found that ground pork was perfect for this small amount. Now before I put it back on the heat, I'm gonna mix it in with this spice paste, get it really well incorporated. This is a very clever way to make a small amount of good chorizo. I like this. I'm gonna put this over medium high heat now. This is where it gets good. This is where we start cooking. Yes, and we get all that nice fat rendering out of the pork. It's gonna smell great. I don't have to tell you, but this is looking good. This looks amazing. <laughs> right? Well, it smells really good. And so we've rendered out a bunch of good juices and that's what our potatoes are going to suck up. Ooh. It's gonna be great. So I'm gonna grab the potatoes now. I'm gonna add them right to the skillet. And just stir to combine. We've got that combined. I'm gonna turn the heat down to low and I'm gonna grab this lid here. So we're gonna cook these for about six to eight minutes until the potatoes are totally tender. While our potatoes are getting nice and tender over there, we're gonna work on one of my favorite sauces of all time. It's guacamole taquero, and it's that green sauce you see at taco stands and at restaurants, and it's super simple to put together. So we're gonna start with tomatillos, and they're really interesting. They're related to tomatoes, they're in the nightshade family, but they're not actual tomatoes. They're really bright and acidic, and they're great in salsa, so we're gonna add a lot of acidity to this. They have a little husk on the outside that you gotta take off, but then they're a little bit sticky underneath, yeah. so you gotta give them a quick rinse. So I'm gonna cut it into one inch pieces. We're gonna let our food processor do most of the work for this. 
we're gonna add an unusual ingredient for salsa that's gonna make this really nice and creamy, and it's an avocado. Interesting. So nice, ripe avocado. And be careful when cutting your avocados. It's one of the number one things people cut themselves on. It's true, so I'm gonna show you a way that I like to do it where you, you can't really hurt yourself. All right. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take this out, and I use like the side of a sink to pop it off. And then instead of holding it and cutting it in my hand, what I'm gonna do is actually cut this in half lengthwise on both sides here. And then once you do that, it's very easy to peel off the skin. Okay, and I'm gonna cut this into one inch pieces as well. Oh, this is nice and ripe. It's gonna be nice and creamy. We're gonna go into the food processor. I've got my avocado. I've got eight ounces of tomatillos. I've got a jalapeno here, and I basically just cut all the exterior off. So I left the ribs and the seeds inside, so it's not gonna be too spicy, but tons of good flavor. A quarter of a cup of chopped cilantro, leaves and stems. The stems have a ton of flavor in there, so we include them tablespoon of lime juice, one minced garlic clove. This is gonna be raw, so you don't wanna use a ton of garlic. And finally, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. This is super simple. We're gonna process it for a minute until it's nice and smooth. All right, let's see what we got. Well, that's beautiful. Mm. All right, so our sauce is all set. Our potatoes are almost tender. It's been eight minutes, and I think we're gonna see some really beautiful potatoes. Mm. I can see that the potatoes really absorbed all that chorizo flavor. We just wanna check and make sure they're tender, so I'm gonna use the back of a spoon here, and oh yeah, they fall right apart, so that's great. We don't want this to be mashed potatoes, but I'm gonna mash about an eighth of this mixture. By mashing just a small amount, it's gonna help add some more cohesiveness to it. So I'm gonna- It's a binder. A binder, exactly. So I'm gonna stir it in. You can see it gives it a little bit more body. Okay. We're ready to eat. All right. So I've got some tortillas that I warmed up. <laughs> now a spoon of our tomatillo and avocado sauce, and a sprinkle of cilantro leaves, some minced white onion, and a squeeze of lime. I pinched the backside. Oh, see, I folded oh, it in. Oh, you folded it in. Yeah. <laughs> That's really good. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is those potatoes, mm. they've sucked up so much of that chorizo flavor. My favorite part about all this is not only is it tasty, it was fast. Well done, Dan. Thanks. To make these tacos, begin by boiling Yukon Gold potatoes. Then make your own Mexican-style chorizo by combining a homemade spice paste with ground pork. Serve with a fresh tomatillo and avocado sauce, and there you have it. From our test kitchen to your kitchen, a killer new recipe for chorizo and potato tacos. You can get this recipe and all the recipes from this season along with our tastings, testings, and select episodes at our website, americastestkitchen.com. I'm ready for my next one. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.